in this video, we're uh, going to discuss uh, Landau levels in, in graphene. So in the previous lectures, you, you saw a graphene, which is a 2D material. And uh, interestingly, near the Fermi level, it has a Dirac spectrum. And uh, the, the low energy Hamiltonian is, uh, you, you saw here, uh, where uh, K is momentum, sigma uh, are Pauli matrices acting on the uh, sublattice space and tau z equals plus, uh, plus or minus one corresponds to the two valleys, uh, k and k prime of graphene. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, ask about the spectrum of the system when we add a perpendicular magnetic field to the system. So um, why, why is this interesting? Two reasons. One is that, uh, as we'll see, the spectrum of uh, uh, Dirac electrons in a magnetic field has interesting features that are re relevant not only to uh, graphene, but also to other materials that we'll see later, later on the, in the course. And the second reason is that uh, this uh, special Landau level spectrum of Dirac fermions was what uh, allowed people to, uh, to identify graphene in experiments for the first time. So um, uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, as usual, uh, we're gonna uh, do a minimal substitution. So we're gonna replace the momentum K by uh, k uh, plus e over h bar times a, the vector potential. And uh, to uh, represent a uniform perpendicular magnetic field, we're going to use the Landau gauge, OK? So where, where uh, a, uh, the, the x component of the vector potential is 0, and the y component is uh, a proportional to uh, the position x and to the magnetic field b. OK, so here's our Hamiltonian of uh, a Dirac fermions in the presence of uh, a uniform a magnetic field. And uh, a, we're, we're going to um, bring this Hamiltonian into a slightly more convenient form in a few steps. So first of all, we see that, as usual, in the Landau level problem, in the Landau gauge, the a k, a y com a, a component of the uh, momentum is actually a good quantum number. And it's always going to appear in this combination, k y plus e over h bar b times x. So what we can do is simply shift the position x. We define this x tilde, which is just a, a, a uh, position x shifted by ky times h bar over eb. A, and then uh, um, a, we get uh, this new Hamiltonian with, uh, with two uh, conjugate terms, kx and uh, x tilde. Next, what we can do um, is uh, a bring the Hamiltonian into a, a dimensionless form. So we can define, as usual, the magnetic length Lb, which is uh, a h bar over a, a e times b square root. And um, a, 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 a here we have actually assumed that b is a positive quantity. If we didn't assume that, we would need to uh, carry out the sign. You can repeat the calculation with, for a general sign of b uh, as an exercise. Okay, but um, a, a then uh, a, a after a introducing the magnetic length, the Hamiltonian has a, this form. Here's our Hamiltonian in a, in a matrix form. It's a, it's a two by two matrix where uh, the, the elements of the matrix are operators that depends on uh, the two conjugate variables, x tilde and kx. OK, so uh, what we're going to do now is focus only on one of the two valleys. So uh, fix tau z, which is the valley index to be plus 1. We'll uh, uh, discuss the other valley uh, uh, later on. But just uh, for concreteness, let's, uh, let's focus on one valley. OK, and uh, moreover, we see this uh, combination, kx minus i x tilde. So that uh, reminds us of the lowering and, uh, um, um, and uh, raising operators of the harmonic oscillator. So we can define a, which is a, a harmonic oscillator-like operator, in this way. It's basically x tilde plus i kx up to uh, up to these factors of Lb that makes, makes, uh, make this operator dimensionless. Uh, and uh, A uh, and A dagger, as usual, satisfy the uh, a, a commutation relations uh, of uh, harmonic oscillator operators. A, uh, the commutator of A and A dagger is equal to 1. So here's our, our Hamiltonian again, a, a, a written compactly using uh, A and A dagger. And now it's not hard to find the eigenstates and the eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian. Okay, so uh, uh, to do that, we can use this simple ansatz. So uh, uh, we take uh, our wave function is a two-component spinner. Remember, where the, the the meaning of the spinner 
is uh, these are the uh, components of the wave function on the two sublattices. So the first uh, component here is on the A sublattice and the second on the B sublattice. And we just take the, the uh, A, A sublattice component to be proportional to the n minus 1 eigenstate of the harmonic oscillator. And the uh, B component to be uh, proportional to the n component, uh, to the n uh, eigenstate of the harmonic oscillator. And uh, um, as usual, if we act with the operator A, the lowering operator, on the uh, state n, we get a, a square root of n times the state n minus 1. OK, so now it's simple. We simply uh, a insert this into the Schrodinger uh, equation. So we act uh, with the Hamiltonian on this wave function. And uh, it's just one line of algebra to see that we'll get a wave function that has the same form. The, the first component is proportional to n minus 1, and the second component is proportional to n. And then we just need to equate that to En, our eigenenergy, times the original wave function. That gives us equations on these two components, An and Bn. And uh, 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 you can, you can uh, solve this and see that uh, these are actually the values uh, of An and Bn. So uh, uh, normalized, An is 1 over square root of 2, and Bn would be either plus or minus i over square root of 2. OK. so. Um, uh, to summarize, here are the eigenstates and eigenenergies of, uh, of our Landau levels uh, in graphene. So uh, our uh, eigenenergies have this form, h bar v, where v is the Dirac velocity over Lb uh, times square root of the absolute value of uh, the quantum number n. And this can be either plus or minus. And the uh, corresponding wave function has this form. It's a two-component wave function on the two sublattices. The first component is proportional to the harmonic oscillator state n minus 1, and the second component is proportional to the uh, eigenstate n. Now, we see that something uh, special happens if we try to insert here n equals 1. That doesn't quite work. Uh, um, uh, so uh, for uh, uh, there's one special wave function of the uh, uh, harmonic oscillator, which is this wave function, 0, uh, uh, and the state 0, which is the ground state of the harmonic oscillator. Okay, so this, uh, this is the uh, wave function that corresponds to n equals 0 here. Uh, there's no component uh, on, on the A sublattice, only on the B sublattice. Okay, and we, if we insert this, uh, um, uh, this eigenstate back into the Hamiltonian, we simply uh, act with the Hamiltonian on the state, we see that the, op the lowering operator A hits the uh, ground state wave function 0, so we get 0. This means that this is actually a, a, an eigenstate with 0 energy. This is the 0th Landau level of the uh, harmonic oscillator. Let's uh, examine a little bit more closely the wave function of the 0, zero energy Landau level. So uh, we were looking at uh, a valley uh, k, so tau z is equal to 1, and explicitly as a function of x uh, and y, this wave function has this form. It's a plane wave in the y direction, as usual for a Landau level in the Landau gauge, uh, times this two-component spinner, which is 0 in the first component, and is equal to phi naught uh, of x shifted by ky times lb squared on the second component. Uh, that's, uh, uh, phi naught is simply the ground state wave function uh, of the harmonic oscillator, so it's a Gaussian. So here it is as a function of x. It's a Gaussian uh, whose center is at ky times lb squared, and its width is of the order of lb. Now, uh, lb, by assumption, is much, much bigger than the lattice spacing of the underlying graphene, of the honeycomb lattice of the underlying graphene. This is uh, uh, the limit in which we're working. This is the low energy limit where we can approximate the spectrum of the graphene as, uh, as a Dirac spectrum. Now, you notice something uh, peculiar here. If you look microscopically at the actual graphene lattice, this zero uh, energy Landau level wave function is actually a, 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 a has a, a support or is living entirely on the B sublattice of the underlying graphene. So let's zoom in into this lattice. So this is the uh, microscopic honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms. And uh, in the zero uh, energy Landau level, the wave function lives entirely on the B sublattice and there's no support at all on the A sublattice. The Gaussian is an envelope function on a much, much bigger length scale than this uh, microscopic uh, lattice. So now you might wonder what, what is actually special about the B sublattice. Why does this wave function choose to live on B and not on A? 
And of course, the two sublattices are actually related by a rotation of the whole lattice by one, uh, 180 degrees. That uh, rotation leaves the perpendicular magnetic field intact. So if we just perform this uh, 180 degree rotation, what we'll get is another wave function that has to have the same energy. But that wave function is actually living on a, a, in the other valley. So what happens a, in the zeroth a, a energy Lando level of uh, graphene, this is very special to the zeroth a, a, a energy Lando level, is that the wave functions at valley K are concentrated entirely on the B sub lattice, say, and uh, the ones in uh, a valley K prime are concentrated on the A sub lattice. And of course, if we switch the sign of the magnetic field, we would get the opposite situation. So that we would get the, that the uh, a wave functions at a, the zero a Landau level at valley K would be living on the A sub lattice and, and vice versa. So this is a, a, a special character of the zero Landau level, a, which is, not, which is uh, different for, for all the other Landau levels. Here's the uh, spectrum of, the, uh, a, of uh, a, the Landau levels in graphene. So the spectrum has this interesting property. First of all, we see the zeroth Landau level. And around it, either in the positive or the negative direction, we have Landau levels whose energies uh, are proportional to the square root of n. And the overall scale that sets the energy of the Landau levels is the scale h bar v over the magnetic length. Okay, so uh, in particular, one over magnetic length is actually proportional to square root of b, square root of the magnetic field. Now, uh, notice also that each one of these Landau levels is actually fourfold degenerate. Why is it fourfold degenerate? Well, each one uh, uh, has two distinct quantum numbers. First of all, valley. The valley of each Landau level can be either k and k prime. The wave functions are different, but uh, the energies of k and k prime are the same. And second, there's also spin. So each one can have either spin up or spin down. Uh, we can actually derive uh, very easily this uh, a special result that uh, the energy of a Landau level is proportional to the square root of n using a very simple semi-classical consideration. So uh, you, might, uh, you might wonder where does the square root of n comes from? So this is a very simple explanation. It's always useful to think about the semi-classical limit. So how does that go? We have a uh, Dirac electron. It has a certain energy E. And its uh, a momentum is proportional to E because it's, it has a Dirac spectrum. So its uh, a energy E is equal to the Dirac velocity V times the momentum P. And uh, suppose that at time equals 0, this electron has a certain momentum in the plane P, pointing, say, up. Now, uh, because of the presence of a perpendicular magnetic field, uh, this uh, electron is going to feel a Lorentz force, and it's going to perform a, cy a cyclotron motion. So it's going to go in a circle. So its uh, a momentum is going to vary along this cir circle. So the rate of change of this uh, a, a momentum p dot is going to be equal to the Lorentz force. So e times v times b. And therefore, the uh, uh, period uh, that uh, the, the time is going to take for uh, the electron to perform a full cyclotron motion is going to be equal to uh, the circumference of this uh, circle, which is two, uh, 2 pi times p divided by uh, p dot. So that's Ev times b. And if we know the semi-classical uh, time it takes to complete a a periodic orbit, we can actually relate that using the Bohr, uh, Zomerfeld quantization rule to the spacing between uh, uh, energy levels. So we know from uh, 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 semi-classics that uh, the separation between two neighboring energy levels is going to be equal to h over the period t. Okay, now using this uh, 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 expression for t, we can derive a, a uh, relation between delta e and 1 over e, okay? So just uh, uh, inserting this relation into the bohr zomerfeld quantization rule. Uh, now, uh, uh, if, if n is very high, meaning at very high Landau level index, where uh, the, uh, we expect the uh, semi-classical analysis to hold, we can replace this uh, finite difference, uh, e of n plus 1 minus e of n, by a derivative with respect to n uh, of the energy. Uh, so uh, the Landau levels 
uh, are very, very dense, so the, their difference in energy is very small. So E times the uh, derivative is just equal to h bar over LB squared, which is a constant independent of n. And then we can integrate this uh, a, a equation over n and find that uh, a, the a, a energies of the Landau levels are plus or minus a, a h bar v over LB times square root of 2n. And of course, this is actually the exact result. It holds not just for a uh, very large n, but uh, all the way to n equals zero. This is very typical of, uh, of a problem that maps to a harmonic oscillator. The, the uh, semi-classical uh, um, analysis is actually exact. So uh, having derived the uh, Landau level spectrum, we can now actually uh, ask what is the whole connectivity as a function of chemical potential or as a function of, um, of density of, uh, of graphene. So uh, we know that uh, each field Landau level contributes unity, h, a, 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 e squared over h, to the whole connectivity. And uh, these are the results of uh, a, the experiments that were actually first done a, a, by these two groups in graphene. And uh, a, 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 what's shown here is the uh, whole connectivity of the system as a function of the density of electrons that can be varied by a back gate. And uh, a, you, a, a, there are two um, a remarkable things here. First of all, you see that uh, the, the jump between one whole plateau to the next it has a value of four times e squared over h. So uh, where, where does that come from? The four is just coming from the degeneracy of each one of the Landau levels, which as we saw is fourfold degenerate because of valley and spin. So uh, this is one characteristic, one unique characteristic of this uh, a, a, a whole connectivity. The other one is that you see that uh, the first jump is actually uh, uh, going across zero from minus two to plus two. What is that? That is just filling the zeroth Landau level. So if the system is exactly charge neutral, if the density is exactly zero, by particle hole symmetry, the uh, hole connectivity would actually be zero. As we go from uh, a, a empty zeroth Landau level to a full zeroth Landau level, the hole connectivity actually jumps from minus two e squared over h to plus two e squared over h, Overall, the jump is by a value of four, like all the other um, uh, Landau levels, which are fourfold degenerate. So seeing this, uh, uh, this uh, quantization and this jump through the zeroth Landau level was the telltale signature that graphene indeed has a Dirac spectrum. And this is the uh, remarkable achievement of these uh, first works that actually both isolated a single graphene sheet and uh, uh, identified its Dirac spectrum. So just to summarize, in this lecture, we saw the unique Landau level spectrum of Dirac electrons and how they manifest themselves in the whole connectivity of graphene. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.